Welcome to Placing Components on the PCB. In this module, we will place the components transferred from the design to the PCB. As a refresher, here are the schematics of the design that we transferred. Looking at the PCB, we can see there are two rooms. These are the red rectangles. They have all of their associated components within them. The rooms are auto-generated and are based on the schematics. All of the components from a schematic sheet are in the room. Also notice the white fly lines that show net connectivity. These will come in handy when tuning the placement. Just like with the schematics, we can adjust our view of the PCB using the mouse. Viewing the PCB, we can zoom in and out while holding the control key down and then rotating the mouse wheel. Holding the shift key down while scrolling the mouse wheel moves us left or right, right to left. With no other key depressed, the mouse wheel scrolls up and down. We can use the rooms to roughly position the associated logic on the PCB. This is a quick but non-precise way to place devices. Left click on a room and start to move it with the mouse. While the room is attached, tap the spacebar to rotate it counterclockwise. Holding the shift key and tapping the spacebar rotates clockwise. The default rules for the PCB require components to be contained within their room. For example, moving U2 out of its room will cause an error marker to flag it, like so. Deleting the room avoids these error markers. Now to fine-tune the placement of individual components, there are a couple of methods available. Left-click on the part with the mouse, select a group with a rectangle sweep of the mouse, and selecting components in the schematic. This also selects them in the PCB. Let's start with the single part. Left click on a part and continue holding the mouse button down. Now move the mouse to place the part. While moving it, if the space bar is tapped, the part will rotate counterclockwise just like with the rooms. Releasing the mouse button drops the part. The next method of selecting parts is handy when needing to move more than one part. To select a group of parts, hold the left mouse button down and sweep out a rectangle. There are two types of rectangle selection modes left to right, and right to left. They differ in what is selected by these actions. The right to left select mode will select everything it touches, as you can see here. Now with them selected, left click on a part and then you can move them using the mouse. To unselect, left click anywhere in the window. The left to right select mode will select everything that the rectangle contains, not just touches. Using the mouse and holding the left mouse button down, sweep left to right. Notice what is selected and what was not. This method is helpful when the place parts are close together and we want to have better control over what is selected. As expected, while moving a group, they can be rotated as well. We can select a group of components in the schematic and they will be selected and can be moved as a group in the PCB. At this point, we should look at the Properties panel, as selection is driven by the settings here in the Selection filter. Note the default typically is for everything to be selectable. Click on the All Objects and that will clear the group. Now click on Components so that we just select components. Use the Sweep to select some of the components in the schematic. Here we have selected four objects as indicated in the status of the Properties window at the bottom. Now switch to the PCB and notice they are selected. Again, to move them, use the left mouse button to click on one of the highlighted parts and move the group while holding the button down. Let's zoom out using the control mouse wheel to get a better view of the PCB. After moving them, click anywhere in the PCB to deselect them. Notice they are still highlighted. To clear the highlight, hold the shift key down and click on the C key. Control Z will undo the last move and it's handy to back up. In fact, you can back up a number of steps given the history. Going back to the schematics, we will select a number of components, but at this time, instead of the group selection, we will left mouse click on the first one, and then while holding down the shift key, continue to click on additional parts. The order we select them is important. Moving now to the PCB, we see they are selected as before. This time we'll use a handy feature. Click on the pull down tools menu and select component placement, and then reposition selected components. Now the first part we selected on the schematic is attached to the mouse for placement. We can rotate it and zoom in and out as well, even during the placement operation. Left click to place the part and then the next part that we select is attached to the mouse. Note, 
that using the fly line connections can be an aid to placement and orientation for the parts. Continue placing all the selected parts until finished. Now clear the highlighting and selection by using the shift key tapping C. At this point, we've only placed parts based on block level understanding of the design. Let's continue the placement and use the connection fly lines to fine tune the placement and orientation. Zooming into U2 using the mouse, we can see a lot of connection lines, maybe too many. To reduce the number of lines, we will hide some of them. To do so, click on the View pull-down menu and select Connections, and then select Hide All. Now we can add all of the connections for a part by following the same View, Connections path, and select Show Component Nets. Clicking on U2, we see all the nets connected to it. Right mouse click to exit the Show Components Nets mode. I often hide the power and ground nets to reduce clutter. To do that, again go to View, Connections, Hide Net. Now click on the power and ground pins to hide their connection fly lines. To move the view for a better look at the local area, hold the right mouse key down and sweep the mouse to move the view. You'll notice it forms a hand. Looking closer, we can now position the U2 support parts based on their connections. To move a parts reference designator, ensure that in the properties panel we have all objects highlighted to enable selection. Left click on the text and hold. Now we can move it using the mouse. I also like to switch to 3D mode in some point to better see the PCB layout, as I find the 3D view quite helpful. Hit the number 3 key to go into 3D mode. While we're here, to rotate the view in 3D, hold the shift key down to get the trackball to appear, and then use the right mouse button to rotate the view. To reset the view, click on the 0 key, or to rotate it by 90 degrees, click on the number 9 key. Hitting 2 returns to normal 2D mode. Moving parts and utilizing connection fly lines to tune the placement would continue as needed. Here is the final place design. While this design did not require it, placing components on the bottom is accomplished by selecting the component and starting to move it, then hitting the L key. This will toggle the part from the current layer it's on to the other side of the board. Another way is to select it, and in the Properties panel, change its layer. One important note, I do not generally use the heads-up display for PCB work, as I find it a little distracting, and therefore I disabled it. Normally it would be enabled by default in the Preferences. To show the heads-up display, I can hold the Shift key and tap the H key. This will toggle the display on or off. This concludes placing components on the PCB. In our next module, we will cover routing the PCB.